this session, I'll be discussing with the help of a case scenario. So this is the case scenario. A 50-year-old female has come with history of irregular palpitations and fatigue. So there is irregular palpitation and fatigue as a symptom. There's no other past significant medical history or any drug intake in the past. On examination, her pulse is irregularly irregular. And this is the ECG you can see. So what are you able to make out on the ECG? So you have the PQRST, that's the complexes here. The P waves are not so very clearly seen. The RR intervals are irregular. They're coming irregularly. And subtle fibrillary waves. You can see the subtle fibrillary waves that you see here. So this ECG is showing that there is absence of P waves. The RR intervals are irregular and subtle fibrillary waves. So the question that's going to be asked to you possibly in your theory paper is what is the diagnosis? What are the common etiologies for this condition and how do you manage? So we know the diagnosis is atrial fibrillation. The etiologies and management will be discussing in the subsequent slides. So this is the common case scenario that we encounter. So coming on to arrhythmias. So what do you mean by arrhythmias? Arrhythmias are nothing but rhythm disturbances. So disturbances in the rhythm of the heart. So we know the normal heart rate is regular. So whenever it becomes irregular, we generally have an arrhythmia. But always remember that we can have arrhythmias when the rhythm can still remain regular. Most of the arrhythmias, you could have irregular rhythm and some of them you can have regular rhythms. We'll be discussing both of them in the subsequent sessions. So basic classification of arrhythmia is based on the heart rate. So when the heart rate is more than 100, we call it as tachyarrhythmias. So tachy is standing for increased heart rate. When the heart rate is less than 60, but still the rhythm is different, we call it as bradyarrhythmias. Both of them are dangerous, both tachy as well as bradyarrhythmias are dangerous. So we'll be discussing some of the common arrhythmias in the subsequent slides. So why do arrhythmias occur? So there are four basic mechanisms of uh, arrhythmias. The first, abnormality of automaticity. That means automatically a part of the heart, maybe the SA node or the other uh, cells will start triggering. That is what we call it as automatic automaticity. So where the impulse was supposed to come, you can see this blue line there. So that is where the impulse was supposed to come. But abnormally, it comes a little earlier. So that is what we call it as abnormal automaticity. The second mechanism, by far one of the common mechanisms, especially when you have atrial fibrillation, etc., is re-entry. So we have two pathways possibly. Uh, this is an example where I can take is the AV node. So AV node has two pathways. You have a fast conducting pathway and a slow conduction pathway. So normally, one of the pathways should be refractory. Only then the impulse will go through one pathway. So supposedly, the impulse travels in this pathway and reaches here. By the time, it should go down like this. But what happens here is the refractoriness of this pathway, the second pathway becomes absent. So instead of the impulse going down, it goes, travels up like this. And that's where you can get a circus-like movement. And that is what we call it as re-entry. Now, this is one of the common mechanisms of arrhythmias, most often being atrial fibrillation. So that's the second mechanism called as re-entry. The third mechanism is something called as triggered activity. It can be of two types. One is early after depolarization and the second one is delayed after depolarization. Now, early after depolarization can also cause arrhythmias and a delayed after depolarization also causes arrhythmias. These are basically for the ventricular arrhythmias. So, this is the three main mechanisms that we have abnormal automaticity, re-entry and triggered activity. So when we classify arrhythmias, we classify them as tachyarrhythmias, I told you, when the heart rate is more than 100. Now this we have already discussed in the ECG section. We call, classify the arrhythmias or call them narrow complex or wide complex. Now that's based on the QRS complex. So remember the QRS width is normally less than 11 milliseconds. So less than three small squares. So if it is more than that, we call it as wide QRS complex. 
and if it is less than that or equal to that we call it as narrow so the basically the tachy arrhythmias are classified as narrow complex or white complex so that's the first thing that we look for next you look for the regularity whether it is regular or it is irregular so understand the most common narrow complex regular arrhythmia is svt or supraventricular tachycardia the most common narrow complex irregular arrhythmia is atrial fibrillation we'll be discussing the rest of them later coming on to the wide complex where the qrs complex is wide if it is regular you have ventricular tachycardia as the cause if it is irregular then it is atrial fibrillation but why is the qrs wide the qrs is wide because of an underlying pre excitation or aberrancy so coming out of the narrow qrs complex where the qrs width is less than 3 small squares so that is how do you classify it as narrow complex so if you see here you have the pqrst the pqrst going on pqrs and t it's coming regularly there's no irregularity rr interval is coming regularly the p is followed by the qrs followed by the t so this is what we call it as a normal sinus rhythm now here what's happening you have narrow qrs complex qrs complexes are narrow you have the p wave the qrs and the t wave they are coming in order only thing that's happening is the heart rate if you see the heart rate here the rr interval is very short that means the heart rate is more than 100 so this is what we call it as sinus tachycardia now sinus tachycardia has all the features of the sinus rhythm that means you have a normal pqrs only the abnormality that you would have is the increased heart rate now sinus tachycardia can be a normal phenomena it could occur physiologically when there is fever anxiety etc or it could be due to pathological condition 